Welcome back and thank you for joining me. Um, today I will be speaking about Mike Pence. As much as people like to talk about Donald Trump, people do not understand that, you know, the people that he surround himself with, they are the unadulterated, purest form of evil there is. And Mike Pence is one of them. He has been laid back, really out of the forefront. He hasn't been saying anything. He hasn't been out there really putting his face out there much. Um, I think we really should keep an eye on his cabinet. I think we should keep an eye on who he surrounds himself with in his administration. Because here in Indiana, because I'm here in Indiana... Um, Mike Pence is very sneaky and slick. He is really about money and his career. And you can put a period on that. That's basically what he is about. And he is always looking for an opportunity. I mean, who would have thought that Mike Pence would be the vice president? He was working behind the scenes, doing a lot for his career because here in Indiana, um, of course, the stupid ass Republicans, conservatives loved him. Um, I don't do the Republican Democrat thing. Like I said, they're all the same. It's just a one group of white people fighting another group of white people for power. That's about it. And money. But Pence basically released this HIP 2.0 here in Indiana, which is um, health care. It's the expansion of Medicaid. And when he did that, which it was this whole story about Obama, you know, care, which is the Affordable Care Act forced, you know, him to do it. They didn't want to do it. Um, he went ahead and because he had to. But it was an absolute shit show because what they did, they had to hurry up and hire. I believe it was 800 to 700 um, people to actually take on this project because before um, it was closed, the HIP program closed down. The first one that he did um, so-called ran out of funds. No, it made its way into his offshore bank account, but he did this HIP 2.0 program, which I was a part of. So that's how I was able to get into the um, Department of Human and Family Services. And I learned a lot of things that go on behind the scenes because of this program. When we were brought on to handle this, there was nothing to handle. They came up with this bullshit on a whim. And he wanted to put his name. He just told them to come up with whatever and just send out, you know, vague information about. It. We were trained on, you know, Medicaid and the different types of Medicaid that people would fall under or could um, be approved for. And also the guidelines of this HIP 2.0 coverage, which what it is. Um, it just opened up health care coverage to everyone um, because it was just for senior citizens and for the disabled and for um, children. And it just opened it up. And it was an absolute mess. 
It was a mess. That's why I said, I don't know why people would be scared to open a business or do something. People are literally scared to make this leap. People should not be scared to open a business or try and make something happen. Because if you know, if you work in a corporate plantation or in any of these companies, even Fortune 500 companies, it's a shit show. And that's exactly what this was. There was no foundation. There was no rules. They didn't have all the information. They didn't know what the hell to tell us to do. They just looked at us crazy and blinked at us and didn't know what to say. Just bullshit the people that you're talking to until we can find out more information. And the majority of us had to figure out things because there were three different um, medical providers. It was Anthem. Blue Cross Blue Shield, Medwise, and um, MHS. So those were the three that were handling, you know, health coverage. And those were your choices, basically. They wanted to make you feel like you had um, a choice and picking what you wanted. All of it was bullshit. The best one out of it was Medwise. Because we didn't get too many complaints from it. But yeah, it's it was really bad. And he never came up here. He sent a few of his representatives there. And there was some cameras there where we were. I wasn't on camera. I wasn't going to be uh, in, you know, my face attached to that bullshit. I went on lunch when they brought the cameras in there. But yeah they it it was we didn't know anything we we had to figure it out we just had to you know string people along until we knew what was going on because it was thrown together and he held this whole like this um state of the state regarding the hip 2.0 program and he he cherry picked people to say that the hip 2.0 plan saved their life. I'm sure it was a few people. It was a lot of poor people who didn't have access to health care at all. So they were able to get this. They were able to get something. But the vast majority of the people who came over from the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, um, what they were doing was they were taking all of the people who were underneath the Affordable Care Act. They were routing um, their information as applications to um, the facility we were to see if they could be qualified for the HIP 2.0 program or any Medicaid coverage. And they would be contacted if they were. They would be sent some information that they could look over and they could make a choice to um, go ahead and accept the HIP 2.0 coverage or to stay with their affordable care coverage. And I wish I could have been there at the state of the state and I would have told the truth. They would have got me by my arm and twisted it and broke it and then, you know, just beat the hell out of me <laughs> for telling the truth. Because a lot of those people, they just picked the best stories that they got. They probably, these were people that probably wrote in letters saying, oh, thank you. I haven't had coverage in such, such a long time and this really helped me, but the majority of the people that eventually signed up for that hip 2.0 health coverage it wasn't long before all we were doing was getting calls back from people saying and this this is their words i don't want this shit I want my Affordable Care Act. I want my Obamacare. That's what they was because they didn't know it was the Affordable Care Act that got them that um, health coverage. They would call up and say, 
I don't want this. I can't keep my doctors. The doctors, you know, I have to change them. They don't know what they're doing. They can't they can't get what they need, the the care that they need. So they wanted to withdraw out of the um, HIP 2.0 program and they wanted to run their ass back to Obamacare. So what we would do, we would send form after form after form of um, withdrawal forms from the HIP 2.0 program so they could get Obamacare. This one older man, I don't care. Isn't it some way that you can just take it off? I don't want to fill out a form. I just want it off. I want my Obamacare. I want my doctors. I just want Obamacare. <laughs> they were running away from it in droves. It was that bad. And they didn't know if they had to send in paperwork to um, our department or the medical providers. It was so much fuckery. It was horrible. And then you pile all that bullshit on top of a company that is just there to make money. And they're telling you you need to um, handle these cases. Anybody who knows about casework knows that, you know, it can take a while to help someone and correct any mistakes. But, no, they expected you to get off the phone with them in five to ten minutes and to fix everything and to be ready to take the next call. Every, you know, anyone who's worked in a call center, they know what that's like. Thank goodness I don't have to do that anymore. But yeah, that's basically what it is. And I saw a few, you know, headlines here where it says um, Hoosiers tell feds hip 2.0 not good enough. That no, they didn't say it's not good enough. They said it was shit. It was crap. And they ran screaming, pulling their hair out away from it. And here it says, you know, hip, Indiana's hip 2.0 offers better course for fixing health care. Bullshit. Bullshit. Like I said, this is for the working poor. It is for the poor and the working poor. And it's, it, it, no, it's not. Oh my God, I wish they would do that. That would be a horrible idea because every month, every month you could be evaluated depending on if your income change, if you have a life change, whatever changes, that can change how much you pay in this program. Like if you don't have any income coming in you still have to pay for the health coverage it's a dollar a month and people look down on people like you can't come up with a dollar a month but like I said these are people who have no income coming in none but then you know one month it could go from you know them asking you for a dollar a month or you could pay twelve dollars for the year and then a month or two later they're saying you have to pay thirty two dollars a month because this income change or whatever it could it fluctuates and you know it it depends on your income but it was horrible it was just, it was, it was horrible. And that's what he ran from. He wanted to run away from this quick, fast, in a hurry. So he went ahead and accepted Trump's offer. But man, people just don't know. Pence is someone to keep your eye on. He is, you know, lurking in the dark corners of the White House, plotting on how to become president. That's what he's doing. And like I said, if he, if something happens to Trump, which, you know, pe I'm not advocating hurting anyone or causing bodily harm to anyone. But, you know, if something happens, please look at Pence because 
he is ambitious and that's the only thing he has on his mind is his self, his family and his career because he um, basically fucked Indiana while he was governor. And even here, you know, he used campaign funds to pay his mortgage and other expenses as if this is shocking. Just spending money on his wife. And who doesn't know that politicians are in the pockets of certain people to line their bank accounts? Of course, he is someone to really keep your eye on because, I mean, the project that he brought forth and my experience with it lets me know that, you know, America is doomed. Like, you have... Agent Orange as the president, and then you have this Pence, this snake as vice president. My goodness, it's just, they cannot run a country. I have seen how he runs his, you know, this project that he was so proud of and that he wanted to put his name on and everything else is it was just a shit show but he is one to really keep your eyes on because he's one of those you know lurking in the dark corners and you know he could slip under the radar everyone looks at jeff sessions which everyone needs to watch that demon but yeah my experience here in Indiana with Mike Pence at the helm my goodness help us all I will leave the article in the description box let me know what you think and I'll see you next time